So I continue reading verse 18. And when this vision disappears, he feels great pain. He is completely absorbed in Sri Radharani. Other than she, no one can soothe the pain of his separation. Sri Radha embodies the quintessence of the Hladini Shakti. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's written, the Hladini potency makes the Lord Rasika Shekara, the king of relishers, and gives him the relish of Lila. And when it enters the devotees' hearts, it gives them the bliss of Krishna's devotional service. Wow, isn't that amazing? I think there's already so many amazing points in these uh, first sentences. And I ask all of you for help to go deep inside of this. First of all, Krishna Mohan, he is always feeling in separation of Shrimati Radhika. And that's why when some gopi comes by or another group comes by, then he's always looking for her. Right, Goravani, you were telling us this last time. But actually, his separation can never be fulfilled without her. She, only she can really make him fully satisfied and fully more happy than he could ever imagine. And that is not only for Krishna, that it makes him the Rasika Shekara, the relishes of all tastes. It's Shimati Radhika, the Ladini Shakti personified, who is giving him the taste, who wants him to relish more taste, because she always wants to make him happy. And she always also hears the devotees' prayers and enters the hearts of the devotees who are praying for service, who are praying for more capacity to love, to learn, and to serve and gives also bliss in devotional service so that is amazing amazing isn't it how she is the reason for everyone's bliss not only for krishna's bliss not only for all the gopis in the spiritual world in goloka vrindavan in braj but to all living entities she is giving this happiness and this bliss that they want to accomplish to have, you know, either a divine love or, or even for worldly love. Maybe so this is, so yes, Radha, 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 Radha. This Radha. is, this is, this is what Gurudev always says. It's so wonderful that um, Ladini Shakti, Radhika is the quintessence of Ladini Shakti. And Baba is saying without Ladini Shakti, there is no Leela. Mm -hmm. So this means in the in the spiritual world, without this Ladini Shakti, without this power of relish, there will be no Leela at all. So we can also see this for our uh, our life. Without Ladini Shakti, there can be no relationship. There can be no relationship. There can be no Leela. There can be no relish. So this means without Ladini Shakti, there can never be any relationship. And therefore, Gurudev always is saying everything is based on love because what actually means Ladini Shakti? Ladini Shakti means the personification of love and that is Swamini. So without this pure the pleasure giving potency, this Ladini Shakti, this Shakti which makes everyone happy including the one who is most happy, Krishna, without this Ladini Shakti no relationship can happen in the spiritual world and no relationship can happen in the material world. So therefore, this when you cook something, there's always one main ingredient. You know, when you make a cake, the main ingredient is flour. So the main ingredient for bhakti is Ladini Shakti. This is the most powerful ingredient in bhakti, which is responsible 
for the Leela in the spiritual world and the Leela and our relationship to our Ishtadev here as Sadakas. Oh, so nice. This Ladini Shakti is actually uh, never ending. Uh, how do you say? Glorification of Ladini Shakti is so uh, nourishing also the hearts of the devotee. Maybe somebody else would like to uh, glorify Ladini Shakti, our dear Shimate Radhika. Radhe, Radhe. I was just actually, I mean, it's very clear said here that Ladini Shakti makes Krishna Rasika Shaka. So without Radharani, he is not the king of relish. Without Radharani, he will never ever taste the highest possible pure love because only in Radhika this love is there for him. So her only meditation, her only goal is his happiness. So without this he would never have such a taste. So I was actually hanging on the words Krishna's devotional service. I think there are different ways we can understand that. Krishna's devotional service. It is said when it comes to the devotees' hearts, it gives them the bliss of Krishna's devotional service. So what kind of devotee and what kind of bliss? This would be my question. So, um, there are different kind of devotees and they will see it in different views. Generally, we can say, yes, Krishna's service means all kind of ragas are included. But how could we see it, actually? We can also say we see Radha's service we serve Radha and Radharani serves Krishna and in this way it's the highest service to Krishna. We could also see it in that way. But we could also see it that Krishna is rendering service to Radharani and this gives him the most pleasure and this pleasure is entering also our heart, because we are there to serve Radharani, that he gets this pleasure. So in this way, we can also feel his highest pleasure. So there are different views on that. Maybe Gurudev wants to add something on this or someone else. Guru wants to relish. So is there Goranga or Jainanda Maharaj? So this I fear. Pradini Shakti is essence of Mahababa. This Mahababa, great, greatest feeling. Uh, Krishna could taste. Actually, Krishna could taste because of feeling. And then Krishna could relish the past time. Or maybe present time. <laughs> and... Uh, also, this Fradini potency, pleasure giving potency, not only the Lord, someone who devoted to the Lord, 
also giving pleasure. So the kind of devotional service is influence of Radini Shakti. And then if we are in the in the influence of Radini Shakti or in Radini Shakti, that is normal, natural position. And then we can also taste that uh, devotional service and leader's taste. This is very actually and uh, this is a kind of a secret of devotional service, bhakti. Because of Radhika backside, Radhika give us so maybe we could explain nicely or add explain. Yeah, or my yoga shakti, you continue mm, because I think the subject is being churned further. Sri <laughs> Radhika is the essential portion of that Hladini potency, and she delights both the Lord and the devotees in this way. Within the Lord, she appears as Hladini Svarupini. And within the devotees, she appears as Bhakti Rupini. This is a very, very important and very, very deep point. This sentence, Radhika is making, is pleasing. What you said, Radhika is pleasing the Lord and she is pleasing the devotees. The devotees. Giving, mm -hmm. so, so this is what we said before, that she is actually there. How can she please the devotees? How can Swamini please the devotees? Only by by being this essential part of Ladini Shakti and through Bhakti. She is the personification of Bhakti. And only when we follow and we take shelter of the lotus feet of Swamini can we really enter Raganuga Bhakti. And then she is giving us this bliss. Otherwise, this bliss cannot come to us. It cannot come from Krishna. This is a wrong understanding. <laughs> it cannot come from Krishna. It comes from Radhika. Definitely from her flowing, like we said yesterday in the Croatian class, this uh, red leg, this foot foot powder on the red leg of Radhika's lotus feet. This, this love is flowing through her, through our parampara. This love is flowing through our parampara, through the hearts of all our Gurudev, Param Gurudev, Paratpar Gurudev, and then it is infused, like she said, into our hearts so that we can actually start um, practicing bhakti and thereby experience happiness. Otherwise, without Swamini's blessings, which comes through Parampara, through Gurudev, it is not possible. Just as Krishna cannot find any other gopi but Sri Radha to relieve him of the suffering of separation from Sri Radha. Similarly, no one else but she can soothe the devotee's suffering of separation from her. Radha, Radha. I was just thinking about Panchatattva and how it is actually seen in Panchatattva. Radharani is Bhakti Rupini. So in Panchatattva you can see that Srivas is actually the uh, personification in Panchatattva of that Bhakti Shakti is coming forth from Gadatha. It's coming, Gadatha is coming forth from 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it's the left side of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's the Shakti side, actually, where Gadatha is there as the full Brahma, Brahma Shakti, and then Bhakti Shakti. So we can see that this mercy is actually always with us. In every moment, we are completely inside and outside. We are always with the love of Radharani in different kinds. And as Krishna can only find full relief from his suffering, we can also only find full relief from the suffering when we serve Radha, because this actually, it's not a contradiction that we serve Krishna, because Radharani is serving Krishna fully, he's completely satisfied. So if we serve her, then he will be fully satisfied. And that means, of course, we are fully satisfied. Prema makes rasa dance and rasa makes the devotee dance. And all together, all these three together dance, actually. And this is the wonderful thing. We have this mercy with us through our Gurudev. We came in connection. And now we are swimming in this ocean of mercy. How merciful Sri Guru Deva was to introduce me to the maid service of such a Radharani. How sad that I don't realize this. Instead of the lotus feet of this Radha, I prefer profit adoration and distinction in this world. This is surely the result of committing offenses for innumerable births. Although I have received the mercy of the saints and my guru, I am still deprived of it. How unfortunate I am. Takura Mahashaya says, I could not hear the nectarian words of the saints because of committing offenses. Rade, rade. I think this is a very interesting point because sometimes I ask myself, I heard millions of times Gurudev saying something, but I didn't understand. And at one point there comes a little bit light on that, on that one sentence he said. He said so many things, but maybe just this one sentence gets a little bit more clear. And I ask myself often why it is like that, why I cannot understand it, why I cannot. He is telling me so many times in a lovely mood, maybe sometimes also a little bit more pressure that it gets in because the false ego wants to block it. So why actually it doesn't really enter? I could not hear the nectarian words. Yes, I heard them, but I didn't. Because I was committing offenses. I think this is the point we offended so many. I mean, at least I. I'm, I cannot speak for you. But I 
I made so many offenses to other people, to other devotees. And that's why the remembrance is not very clear. So I have to go on in this on this way, on this path, and clean the heart. Because it's not that Brahma is not there. No, Brahma is always there. It is even fully developed in our heart. But the heart is not clean, and this is the problem. So many trash inside. So we have to go on, like sharing with you, get your mercy, all you great souls and Gurudev, sharing again and again their mercy. And by this, and by chanting, of course, by our sadhana, Brahma sadhana, we will purify the heart and then this Brahma can be fully again shine out of the heart, in the heart and out of the heart. So I think it's a very important point that we don't give up. It's just unclean, we have to wash it. It's not that it's not there, that we cannot get it, or it's not a hope, hopeless case, actually. We are all hopeful cases. But we have to go on and show that we want it. Yeah, the subject is so important, very deep, and sometimes often misunderstood of Aparad. What are these offenses? What are these blockages? They are Aparad. They are without. Radha means not being in love and uh, not doing anything with love, like withdrawing my love for my own um, whatever I think I need. My needs are first. But that's so wonderful, Gurudev. You gave us this easy to understand love in action um, projects. Love in action, everyone can understand. And love in action is full, rather. I give, I give to you. Like Namaste also, I bow down to you, not to me. I bow down to you. It's not for me, it's for you. And I see in my life also how many times I'm still thinking about my own thing, no? And not how I can make others happy. And that is the nature of Radha. She always wants to make everyone else happy. So Aparad, I think, or I feel, on a very deep level, is that ego that always wants to catch things for myself, my so-called self, for my own interest. No? I want my comfort zone, at least me. I like my comfort zone. <laughs> but what I have learned in Vrindavan, in your shelter, Gurudev, is this love and action. To give love without judgment and to give you know my energy my whole um how do you say this my heart and my my intention with a pure understanding that i am a servant of love so love always wants to make everyone happy and we see it best when we are in Vrindavan, how many people come into your room, Gurudev, and all of them, you want to make them happy and you make them happy. And it's never that you say, go out, I have no time. You receive all people and it's like Radharani, she will never send any soul away, whatever they have on their hearts, on you know, whatever sorrow they have, whatever misfortune they have. And... For me, that is the best um, cure to do these actions in love as much as I can and not differentiate 
because my mind is still so much in duality. I like to give love to that person. I don't want to give love to that person. Actually, I think Swamini, and uh, we learn it also in Vrindavan Bridge Basis, they receive everyone who comes from Madhukari. They give everyone a roti, a chapati, a sapchi. They always ready to give, to give in love and to give without uh, differentiation. That for myself, I want to learn. I would, I want, I, I really very much like what Goravani said and what Suniti said, very nice. But I would a little, not besser visa, but sorry, um, fine tune the thing, you know, um, because don't misunderstand me. I'm not, I don't want to, you, you know, um, I would go a little bit more back. I would say the tendency of being selfish is not apparat per se. So we, are, this is the end, the, the nature of the jiva is that he is always uh, absorbed in himself. So that I fully agree 100%. This is, the, but this is not, this is not the apparat in itself. But like you said to me, that this will lead to apparat. This consciousness, this self-absorption, this ego, this I want to satisfy my own needs, this, this Purusha man mentality is not the apparat per se by the Shastra because then we are doomed because all the jivas, the nature of the jiva is to be averse from Krishna since time immemorial, since ever. So this tendency to fulfill our own needs leads to apparat. It, it will put our mind away like everyone, Goravani and myself and you, Sunit, we are now so long in this business and all the time we can watch ourselves. The more we we spend in self-absorption, the less we can go deep into bhakti. This is what I realized. The more I think about myself, the less I can think about the divine couple. But this is not apparat himself. The apparat comes when we when we are too much in this consciousness, and then, like Mahashai uh, Narodam is saying, Bando Mui Sabadhana Mate, this carefully carefully doing sadhana bhakti cannot happen when we are self-absorbed so i'm i'm for i bow to your feet Gauravani and suniti this is the main point but many people think that having this mentality is apparat this is not this we cannot think like that because it will lead to the apparat and then we are we have to we have to like you said suniti we have to get out of this business we have to get out and think for the others and think like Sartre, Jean-Paul Sartre, he was a deep, deep atheistic person. But even he, Prabhupada said, he is better than a hypocrite believer. He said, Jean-Paul Sartre said, living for others is the highest good. So this is actually a very nice devotional attitude. This um, sharing and giving is holier than taking. In Germany, geben ist seliger wie nehmen. This giving is holier than taking. This is the attitude we should have. Sorry if if I I just wanted to to add at this. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think that it's a contradiction. It's more uh, clear actually. You made it more clear. Thank you for that. Suffering, great separation. Srila Raghunatha Dasa Goswami weeps. Then Swamini mercifully calls him, Tulasi, come. Sri Raghunatha Dasa sits up and sees another transcendental picture. A dice game has commenced in the grove of Sudevi Saki. Sukumari, tender Radhika, could not stand up against heroic Krishna during the water sports, the honey drinking play, or the swinging pastime. 
So now the Sakis are finding a means to defeat Nagara Krishna. Fair-faced Krishna sits facing fair-faced Radhika in Sudevi's green grove, surrounded by all their dear loving girlfriends. First, they put Krishna's flute and Radhika's veena at stake, placing these stakes in front of them. Nandi Muki and Vrinda are the witnesses and Kundalata in the conductor of the moves of the pawns. Lalita sits on Radha's side and Madhu Mangala on Krishna's side as advisors. No one else can interfere by undoing a move already made or vice, vice versa. First, they must open the hands before they can throw. And then someone throws 17 or more, the hand must also be opened. Swami says, Sundara, you can make the first move. Shyama Sundara throws, but does not open his hand. Swami shakes the dice between her hands, and at the same time, she shakes Krishna's mind with her soft smile. At the first throw, she immediately scores 17 and she opens her hand. The Sakis exchange meaningful glances with each other and say, we could understand that you would win this game. Oh, you cowherd boy, just run after your cows with the stick in your hand, saying, hi, hi, to move them up. What do you know about dice? During the second throw, Shyama opens his hand. Tulasi sits by Swamini's side in such a way that she can see her face. Daddy, it's such a beautiful scene and I just want to say two things that came into my heart that when Swamini is shaking the dice and she is smiling at Mohan, she is also shaking his mind. She is making him very insecure. She is very uh, full of love and full of wonderful emotions. And Krishna or Mohan is so much captivated by her beautiful glance, by her eyes, and by her hands when she elegantly, very elegantly, she is, you know, shaking the dice. And when she is shaking the dice, then also her whole body is shaking. So that looks very, very beautiful and very enchanting. It's a very uh, uh, enchanting atmosphere there because everyone is very, uh, uh, what do you say, Attent full of attention and full of sweet feelings, how the game will go out. And another uh, feeling that came to me is why Tulasi Manjari she always wants to see Swamini's face. Why? Because in her face, in someone's face, you can see what are they feeling? What are they thinking? If, if someone is very close to you, even by the voice you can hear how they feel. 
How is the mood? So Tulsi Manjari, she always wants to, you know, be vis-a-vis -vis to Swamini. She doesn't want to look at, at Mohan even because Swamini is her object of veneration, her object of love and interest. So she always wants to make sure that every movement, anything, any little sign, any little hint that comes from Swamini, she wants to, you know, she wants to drink it. She wants to get the chance to do the service that Swamini wants. Like sometimes Swamini will look at her and say with her eyes, do say something also to this cowherd boy, how he will make it. The cowherders, they are not good at these intelligent games. Like this, she give hints with her eyes, with her smile, with her whole uh, face. And uh, Tutsi always wants to catch it. She even, when she was in another verse, we had this uh, last week, I think she was making her hair. Even then, because she is speaking to Swamini and she's combing her hair and she has many feelings while doing it. And she wants to share these feelings with Swamini. And she wants to also relish and uh, feel what Swamini feels when she is sharing with her. So that's so important that uh, this Tulsi Manjari, this small, also tender girl, she always wants to make sure that she doesn't miss any movement any hint and any little chance to do be of service. Swamini is bewildered when she sees Shyamasundara's sweet form and Shyamasundara becomes engrossed in gazing at Radha's sweetness. Will he ever see her like this again? Radhe, Radhe. This shows how eager, how eager Shyam Sundara is to enjoy that kind of rasa, such games such wonderful exchange and it is said so often that this creates for him much more enjoyment than to you know, unite with Radharani personally because this is actually playing with his feelings when Radharani is shaking then her limbs are also shaking. And in this moment, the heart of our Mohan is shaking extremely. It gets unsteady. So many different feelings are shaked in this heart in that moment. So many different wishes are coming up in his heart at that moment. He cannot control himself by any means. He is losing always, actually. Sometimes it sees like that he wins, like in Radakund during the midday pastimes when they splash water. It seems that he wins, but actually he is losing because who wins really is Radharani. She is always Jai Shri in every moment. It's just that we have to uh, see that in the Lila. We can see it if we go deep inside. She is always winning. Why? This was the point I, I want to make. Why? Because her love is so great that she has always this heart in her control, under her control. And that is actually what makes him enjoying so much. 
because she knows better than him what his wishes are. And that's why he himself let his complete self fall into Radharani's control and hands. So this is so wonderful in this Leelas. It gives him so much joy, so much joy. And who can give him such a joy? Only our Swamini. And the Kinkaris together with Swamini. They can even give a little bit more fire into that Lilas. And this is our Seva. There are very few people who love them. There are plenty of people who like to take from God. But there is no one who knows how to give to him. Everyone is busy taking from him. Should I do bhajan just for my own pleasure? Or should I forget about my own happiness and distress and do bhajan just to please him with my service? I'm chanting because it makes me happy. While chanting, do I remember he whose bliss knows no bounds when he hears me chanting? Jai Shri Radhe. Such wonderful deep points here. Srila Ananda Das Babaji is so merciful. He is going in the role that he is like us. But actually what is teaching us here? Should I think about myself when I'm doing bhajan? Yes, I'm doing bhajan because then after bhajan I feel better, day is better. Things can be smoother. Is this really the point? And he's saying more up. There are a very few people who love them. He's saying them, right? So Nanda Das Babaji, why are you saying them? Tarun Baba said yesterday, every word is so meaningful. Yes, he's saying them because this includes Radharani. It's not just Krishna. So there are very rare people who love them. A lot of people are taking by religion. I serve you in Aishwarya because I want to have something of your six opulences. Give me, give me. Dharma to get Artha. This is not a spiritual process for self-realization. It is because I want something from you. But no one, no one is sat here, knows how to give to him. Only one person knows. And that's why she is our Swamini. We learn from her how to give and not to take. And by serving her, her feelings come to us and her feelings connected with the soul 
will create a specific form of the soul, like we want to serve. Do we want to serve like her? We will get a form like her, a little bit younger, because we want to serve and not enjoy. But she is the guru of serving for everyone, for every raga. Whatever raga you want, she is the guru. Without her, without her mercy, we will never ever learn how to give him. We can have some ideas, some speculations, yes, but we will not know exactly. In this way, know means feel what he needs right now, in that moment. But Swamini knows always. So how glad we are that we are serving such a wonderful, undescribable, beautiful person. And this mercy is coming to us through the Guru Principle. through our Gurudev. Jai Shri Ramadhi. I don't mind to introduce myself as a pure devotee, but I'm not aiming at the happiness of my beloved deity. I'm mainly concerned with my own happiness and stress. In Srimad Bhagavata, Radhe, it is seen. I just want to, this is called big shape. What is Baba showing us? It's called big shape means regret. It is a feeling while we are doing our spiritual practices, maybe also sometimes while I'm singing, this feeling comes. I regret that I cannot be more pure. I regret that I'm still in uh, living in some hypocrisy about myself. That's, it sounds sometimes a little bit harsh. Like he said, I don't mind to introduce myself as a pure devotee, but I'm not aiming at the happiness of my beloved deity. So expressing this is helping us to pray for more um, honesty, and also get the blessings of Baba who is writing this. And look deep in my own heart. Where are still these traces of Laba, Pushta, Pratishta? Desire to be known. Desire to look good. Desire to be a guru. Desire to be a pundit. Many things. Some hidden desires are in the heart. And um, Baba is showing us the important uh, feeling what all pure devotees have, and even Lord Chaitanya and his Shrik Shastakam, he is also giving this, I am not a sannyasi, I am not this, I am not a brahmana, I am not this, I just want to be the servant of the servant of the servant of the gopis. So sometimes these feelings are very uh, important also to get the the deeper identity of who I really need to be and where I really want to immerse myself. And if it doesn't happen, 
then I just regret it. I just pray for more mercy or help and some um, encouragement and support from all my brothers and sisters, from my Gurudev. That is also very important to, to look at it as a good thing, this shape, this regret. It's a good kind of prayer also. And it happens sometimes and it will do uh, the cleaning, the Chetu Dabana Marjanam. In Srimad Bhagavata, it is seen that Bali Maharaja gave everything to the Lord and just remained his gatekeeper. The gopis are the greatest devotees. The gopis, so it's written in Chaitanya Charitamrita. The gopis don't consider their own happiness and distress. Their pure love makes them act just for Krishna's pleasure. For Krishna, they give up everything. Their pure love causes them just to act for Krishna's happiness. And Sri Radharani is again the greatest of them all. In Govinda Lilamrita it's written, because she delights all of Krishna's senses with her beautiful attributes, Sri Radhika shines like Sri Radhika alone. She cannot be compared with anyone else indeed. Because they have taken shelter of Sri Radhika's lotus feet, this great love is also infused in the maidservants. They don't know anything else in this world but the happiness of the divine couple. Srila Raghunatha Dasa Goswami prays to Sri Rupa Manjari in his Sankalpa Prakasha Stotra 11. Oh, Saki yeah. I'm just doing this because actually I, I oh, Tarun Baba, I, <laughs> please say something about this Gopi Bhav. It's so important that we understand because Gurudev is always giving the hint that first we have to come to the level of Gopi Bhav, which is written in Chaitanya Charitamrita Adilila 4. So, Tarun Baba, maybe you want to share on that or someone else. I would love to hear Gurudev. Gurudev, can you share about the distinctions on, on the Gopi path? We want to hear from you, please. Gurudev is in Samadhi. Okay. So Gopi Bhav, it's very, it's very high subject, honestly. <laughs> so Gopi Bhav is different. Radhika has five different kinds of girlfriends. So to make it very simple and to make it very easy, we are in the category that we love Radhika more than Krishna. We are Radha Snehadika. We love Radhika more. Then Krishna, we are also in Madhurya Ras, we are also in Gopi Bhav, but we love Swamini more than the Lord. And so this is the symptom of, of Manjari Bhav, that we are Tadatmika, that we are really Tadatmya, so close to Swamini, like Baba here said, 
all the love Swamini is experiencing, the Manjaris can feel also Lalita and Vishaka, as Sakis can never understand nor feel those emotions like Swamini is feeling. Like the first verse of Vilabakusa Manjali, Rupa Manjari is so absorbed in the love to her Swamini that actually she feels the she feels the bites of Krishna on the lips of Swamini, and she has even the bare bite marks on her own lips, so that Raghunath, in, as Tulsi Manjari, has to say to her, oh my God, what happened to your lips? So the Manjaris are so close to Swamini that they feel, like Baba is saying here, the same love that she feels. And this is only possible because of this Bhavo Lasa Rati. Uh, Rupa Goswami, in his wonderful Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he explains Bhavola Sarati. When the love for someone is excelling the love for Krishna, then this is Bhavola Sarati. We in Madhurya Rasa, all the elements and all the bath and all the love is directed to the lotus feet of Krishna. But when the love to the Lord is higher, when, when there is a higher love there, then this is called Bhavala Sarati. It is to direct it not to Krishna, but to Swamini. So this is then actually the Stai Bhav of the Manjaris. They love Krishna much, much more. Uh, sorry, they love Swamini much, much more than Krishna. And this is actually the big difference in this Gopi Bhav. We all are Gopis. Manjaris are Gopis and the Sakis are Gopis. But the Manjaris have more love for Swamini than for Krishna. And there are those who love Krishna more. They are Krishna, Snehadika. And then there are those who love both equally the same, Visham, Sneha, which is both are the same love amount. But we are in the last category. We are the Manjaris. We love Ladika much, much more than the Lord. And like you said, Gaurav Gauravani, mm, there are so many mm, Rasas even in Madhurya Rasa, in the last Rasa, in the highest Rasa, there are still distinctions there. And therefore, Radhika and, and Raghunath Swami is saying, Swamini never feels shy before the Manjaris, so they can be there where nobody else can be. So this is our extreme fortune, that we can actually be in such a position, such closeness and such sweetness to experience into our heart, by the mercy of Guru and Guru Manjari, and ultimately, of course, by Swamini. I think this is more, if someone wants to add more, please do. Jai Sri Radha, thank you very much for that. And I just wanted to underline again, because Sometimes it helps me to hear it again and again. And like Guru, they say, underline, underline. Under all these gopis, which are completely selfless, giving love, Sri Radharani is again the greatest of all of them. Krishnendriya lada gunahya udara. Shri Radhikara Chati Radhikeva. This is from Govinda Lilamrita. Because she delights all of Krishna's senses with her most beautiful attributes. Shri Radhika shines like only Sri Radhika alone. O oh, Saki Rupa Manjari, may Sudevi teach me the heart, the art, <laughs> may Sudevi teach me 
the art of dice playing. When the divine couple play at dice in the assembly of fair-eyed girls born in Gokula. With the words of my eyes, I shall declare my Srinata, beautiful mistress, to be the winner. Sorry again, but I think this is a very important point that actually why Rupa Manjuri is saying here, born in Gokula, fair-eyed girls born in Gokula. Maybe someone wants to say something about this. Nobody. <laughs> this is actually a hint like Vishwanath, Vishwanath Chakravati part is saying in Rakavat Machandrika. This is actually our, this is the appearance of our form. And we are, we are actually, we are transported there. So this is actually our real being there, our real appearance there in this realm. Uh, Sita, Sita Pranali means that we one day realize our spiritual form, and we are, will be transported there to this transcendental realm by the Kripa of Gurudev by giving us this pranali. I would like I would like to share one really really wonderful thing I read this morning if you if time permits and you allow me um, because we are sitting here and we are relishing these words of the Mahajans I was reading uh, this morning I always try to read in the morning something from my Gurudev and I was reading Prema Bhakti Chantrika beginning verses. And there was such, Baba is going in the commentary so deep. And I just wanted to share how he views the commentaries. Now we have the commentary of Raghunath Das Goswami, but he is in that, um, Naratam Das Thakur is there um, glorifying Rupa Sanatan. And he is saying those Mahachans, especially Rupa and Sanatan Goswami, they are like wells of pure Kripa. Wells means brunnen, you know, wells is a little a thing which, which you dig in the earth and very small and it goes down, down, down. And this is what we all experience, these wells of, of beautiful creeper. And Baba is playing devil's advocate then in this, uh, in this commentary and he is saying, come on, why are you saying wells? Why are you saying wells of creeper? Why are you not saying ocean of creeper? Why is this only a well of Kripa? This cannot be. Baba is playing this thing, you know. He's, uh, not, all the Acharyas do this sometimes. They play, they ask counterproductive questions. So actually, it should be ocean of wells, right? Huge, huge oceans of, of Kripa. But Baba is then saying no. And then I was so amazed. I read this a hundred times, like Goravani is saying. You read it and you read it and you read it. But my blockhead out of wood is not it's not understanding it. So then Baba is explaining, no, no, no. It is wealth out of several reasons. And this is so, I admire this so much from Baba that he can be so clear and, and very on the point. And I was really, I got goosebumps reading that. So he's saying there's, there are several reasons why these words of the Mahachans, here Raghunath Das Goswami, there Rupa Goswami, over there is Sanatan Goswami. We say Rupa Raghunath, Rupa Sanatan, you know what I mean. These are wells of Kripa, of one reason is, the ocean is very nice, but in the ocean, there are so many different streams coming in. So many different rivers are flowing in the ocean, Kyana, 
and 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 what is the other thing? Karma, Kyana, Aishwarya, this and that. The ocean is a mixture of all different streams. So those are not the words of our Mahachan. They are pure. The well is pure water, and you can drink from this well very nicely. And then the second reason Baba is saying why this it's not the ocean of Kripa, but the well of Kripa, because the ocean is salty and nobody can drink the water of the ocean because it's so salty, but we can drink the water of a very nice well. And you just put a, 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 a bucket in this well and you bring up beautiful, pure water and you drink that water and you will be refreshed and relished. So I was amazed how Baba is going in these words and you sit there and you think, my God, this is so beautiful. And this is this what we now all are experience. We are drinking from these wells of the purest water, Rupa Goswami, Raghunathas Goswami. This is the pure nectar we get from this. I was just wanted to share this because it's so nice that the beauty of, of the words of the Mahachans. Thank you. Swamini is completely bewildered when she sees Shyama's moon-like face. And Shyama makes some noise to distract, to distract her. <laughs> At that moment, Tulasi gives Swamini a hint with her eyes and Swamini wins. As soon as Shyama loses, he picks up his flute. Swami tries to take the flute away, saying, give me your flute. But Shyama does not want to give it. He is Rasika Shekara, so he wants to play a little bit. He won't hand over the flute. So Swamini tries to grab it from him. They both start pulling at the flute and Swamini says, I have one. Why don't you give me your flute? Your flute is very naughty. It spoils everything. I will throw it at I will throw it into the Yamuna. Shyama hides his flute behind his head. So Swamini throws herself on Shyama with her full weight and snatches it away from him, making him relish an extraordinary spiritual flavor with her. Vamya Bhava, attitude of opposition. Radhe Radhe Gurudev. You want to add some inspiration? First, I give you something that you desire and then I will take your flute. I will immerse you in an ocean of bliss by snatching the flute from you. That's Swamini's mood. Can you imagine Shyama Nagara's condition then? He loosens his grip on the flute, so Swamini has a chance to snatch it from his hand and throw it to Tulsi. And throw it to Tulsi, who quickly hides it somewhere. Rade, rade. This is so wonderful. 
first of all, Krishna is not acting, you know, like you would expect from a person who's called God. <laughs> he is a cheetah. He lost, but he will not give the flute. So he is in rasa. He is playing and he can only play with Radharani and with the Kinkaris like that, completely losing himself. Not even a whiff of Aishwarya is there. Aishwarya actually is just the base for jokes, nothing else there in this realm. They just joke always about Aishwarya Bhav. But this is such a sweet game, such a lovely exchange. And Swamini's only attitude is, let me please him. First, I give him something he likes. I will throw my whole body on him. Then he becomes so bewildered that he has to lose the flute. It's not possible anymore to keep it. Because what for you need a flute who is calling the gopis when you have the most expert gopi directly with you, giving you all you, can, you cannot even imagine for what you need such a flute in this moment. Now it's useless. And even there, Radharani is making jokes with him afterwards. So funny. And what is so wonderful? The kinkery is there. And we know when we play some game and somebody is drawing something to us, we have to be one with this person to catch it. When we are somewhere else, we cannot catch it. We cannot catch the feeling because Radharani is not drawing anything material. She is drawing some feelings, some Mahabhav, and Tulasi is catching it. What a wonderful scene. So we can see that actually Radharani is giving us such a wonderful position and we can be completely involved in this wonderful exchange of Mahabhav and make taste even higher for the one Radharani serves. And the flute, Radhi, she is a troublemaker, or he. And this troublemaker is now out of control. Because actually, <laughs> Mohan and his flute, they are also one. With this flute, he is enchanting everyone, and he is, you know, doing whatever he needs to do. He is pleasing everyone. Raja Jana Ranjana. He is the one who pleases full of Rindavan. But now, Shimati Radhika is in control. She is throwing her beautiful, beautiful divine self on him. So now she is the one who is playing the flute. She is the one who is giving the tune. And she is the one who is enchanting all of the other kinkaris and gopis and all of the other animals of Braj, all of them who are witnessing this. They love to witness how Shimati Radhika is pleasing Mohan so much so that he has no more control of his flute, what to speak of his other senses, of his whole body, of his whole mind, probably also he will faint. And um, I like it really very much <laughs> that uh, she isn't a shy girl anymore. She's like a coward boy. 
Before I just said, oh, in the water sport, you can't ever win. She's more strong. But now, with her full weight, she is showing against the bow. <laughs> so she can catch the flu. <laughs> I like it so much. In this way, Swamini steals the flute by enchanting Shyama. There must have been some enchanting herb on her breasts. Thus, Swamini is known as Jayashri, the beautiful goddess of victory. The Sakis and Manjaris lean against each other, laughing and laughing. When our hero comes back to his senses, he sees that he lost his flute. So he says, where is my flute? Shiradika says, who knows? You were defeated, but you didn't hand it in. We don't know where your flute is. Shyama, surely you must have taken it. Swamini jokingly says, why should I? You think we have a shortage of firewood at home? <laughs> And even if we were short of wood, with this much wood, we cannot even heat up some milk. Why then should we take your small bamboo flute? And she meaningfully looks at Lalita, who is then immediately searched by Krishna. Lalita blinks at Vishaka. So Krishna goes up to Vishaka and feels if she has a flute on her body or not. That's so here, so here, so here you can see, you, no, no, sorry. So here you can see, even in this little Leela, you can see that everyone. What is, the, what is the part of everyone? Everyone is there to enhance rasa. Everyone is there to, to, to enhance the bliss of the divine couple. You know, this is all, all of them play a certain part to, to enhance the rasa and to enhance the bliss of rasa raja and swamini. And everyone is playing like, you know, like we play when we were young and when we were kids, you know, we hide and seek, you know, this is, very innocent playing which makes them so happy and makes makes it really funny and everyone is playing each role and also to 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 be in contact with krishna the mancharis will not let them search themselves but the sakis they will let them search so it's very 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 differentiated Thus, Krishna looks for his flute on all the eight sakis and all the manjaris, starting with Sri Rupa Manjari. Thus, Krishna looks like a blue swan, relishing all the golden lotus flowers, the gopis, and the nectar ocean of Sudevi's grove. Radha Radha Gurudev, do we get some mercy from Vrindavan? How are you, Gaurachandra? Please share something. I 
بله یه سینا تو شد نه شکر به وقتی که لسن yes okay yeah I'm very happy to be here but little difficult for me to enter because fan is running I so I also relish just to be here but I can share something in the Leela it becomes all clear Sorry, Adi, Adi, there's somebody called Shanti. Can you please mute yourself? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now. Yeah, I like very much that Baba is writing. Now. Somebody is <laughs> making the noise. Yeah, how focused Rati Manjar is on the face of Swamini. She chooses such a position that she can see the face of Radharani. She not relishing Radha and Mohan. She just is fixed in the face of Radharani. Gopis, they relish all the Leela with Radha and Mohan, how they play the dice, but Manjari is so totally fixed in Radharani's face. And in the beginning, it is written that for the devotee, Radharani is Bhakti Rupini personification of devotion and devotion I cannot do without Radharani and if the Manjari has such a great desire to to serve what is her very being to serve then without Radharani she cannot survive that feeling that just came to me and also there were many leelas before in which Krishna it looked like he has the upper, upper hand because of his bodily strength in the Julan leela when he is When he is making so high movements with the Julan that Radharani just can hold on to him. Or when they play in the Radha Kunda, by his bodily strength, he take her by force and putting under the water, sometimes very gross, naughty. But here in this type of game, now the gopis, Radharani, they have chance to seriously pay back to him. <laughs> and his flute is at risk. So beautifully writing that this flute spoils everything. This flute spoils the patience of Radharani and the gopis. It spoils the dharma. <laughs> it spoils my reputation in society. This flute is full of poison. It destroys everything. So if Krishna don't have this flute, then he is not able to call us. 
then we can be good housewives, can have a peaceful life, and not being so attracted by this beautiful sound of the flute. So without his flute, Krishna is without his weapon to attract everyone. So that, <laughs> that is very heavy to digest for him. So he cannot let go this flute because when he is the Rasika Shekara, he wants to relish. So he calls everyone with the poison of his flute. But when he gets lost of this flute, then he has no weapon and then he cannot relish. And when Radharani takes the dice and shaking it slightly, he already, she already said to him, you know, you will lose everything. Your destiny, your happiness now is in my hands <laughs> and you will lose it. So, yeah. That oh, wow, it. very nice. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. I was thinking that um, ex same feeling came to me, what you express when Shimati Radhika is shaking the dice, you know. It's like this, you give me this feeling. Yes, you are stealing all of us with our flute, with your flute. But now your time of stealing is over. Now I will steal your mind. Now I will steal your flute. Now I will steal your whole body. <laughs> she is like this also in a very naughty mood. Very uh, attractive when Swamini is becoming, you know, like this overpowering, overwhelming Shyam, Mohan. She becomes... Uh, and then, you know, also what I like so much, what Gurudev stresses again and again, that the pleasure of Swamini and the, the pleasure of Mohan is the pleasure of all. That's why also the gopis, you know, they also, they laugh and they have a fun when Krishna is stealing the flute. Right, Sachinandan Baya? He's disappearing. He's black today. <laughs> and also Krishna is the searching the flute in everyone. And also Shimati Radhika is having so much fun when he is also searching all of them. And not only the gopis now, also he's searching the manjaris and they are having so much fun, so much laughing and so much uh, joy together. And I like this example also, Tarun Baba, that you were giving. This is like an innocent joy. It is completely, uh, you know, it's so, this joy is so blissful. It's so beyond this world. I mean, we have an experience of maybe hide and seek and playing dice, but this playing in the spiritual realm, I imagine I have not been there, but I imagine from the words of our Achayas, from the words of our Rupa Goswami, in Tulasi Manjari, our Raghunadas, it must be so enchanting, it must be so magic when they're having these beautiful, beautiful games and all the feelings of all those who are there are getting higher and higher and higher and no one of them is doing it for themselves. They are all doing it to make the other happy. Isn't that beautiful? Because in this world, we often have this experience that people are all acting for their own self-interest. What's in there for me? I am also of this category, I'm sorry to say. What's in there for me? And what, you know, how much do I get from it? How much can I earn? How much can I enjoy? But there in the spiritual world, in that Leela, in that divine game, it's all, how can I make you happy? And how can I please my Swamini? 
how can I please my Mohan, her Mohan, not my Mohan, sorry, see, so many things are still there. How can I please, you know, them? And that is what Baba is giving us here, this beautiful, beautiful divine play with a divine uh, desire to make everyone who is there uh, drown in the ocean of, of Ladini. And who is that ocean of Ladini Shakti? It's our Swamini. We are very proud that yeah. it's she who makes everyone happy. Krishna tries to make everyone happy. It's true. He is very good. He is very attractive. But actually, without her, her mercy and her feelings and her, you know, mm, how do you say, blessings, it's even difficult for him because she is the mercy of, of her love is also his his uh, treasure, uh, the mercy of her love is his treasure, is his heart. So that's why these leelas are so amazingly um, deep. They sound like the children's game. And that's why Baba says, why am I not still, you know, he's giving us this regret feelings because I look at myself and I see, oh, there's many things that are not so ready yet they are not so mature they are not so rife no? in germany we say rife i am still a green yeah green behind the ears we say in germany i'm a green horn i think they say it in america but when i become more mature more ripe then all these lilas they will unfold like the lotus because they are compared to the lotus flower and it has many petals many leaves and they are unfolding. So the unfolding of the Leela is what we are getting here together from hearing from each other. And I am just amazed why our Goranga Sundara is not unfolding something of your love today. Maybe we did something wrong. Maybe some apparat came. Huh? <laughs> Radhe, Radhe, I am very selfish today. I'm collecting all your nectar and putting in my heart to melt. I'm very selfish. I'm not in Bhavala Sarati today ah, <laughs> at all. Please forgive me, but I'm very selfish and I'm very <laughs> thankful for your nectarian words. Radhe, Radhe, love you. I, is want, I, I wanted to say also what Suniti just said to the point of, of innocence, you know, that people are that the, the 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 pastimes are so innocent but when we read when we read all the grandas and radha rasa sudanidi lot they said that you know not even brahma vishnu and shiva these pastimes cannot even be attained or seen by them or or even heard of by them so it is it is funny for me and it is wonderful in the same time you know that when we hear the prayers of brahma when we hear the prayers of of the Bhagavatam, when all these highly exalted demigods are praying to Krishna and all are standing there and huge opulence and magnificent prayers. But here it's so funny, the Manjaris, they can say to Krishna, come on, man, what do you need? To, why would we need this little flute? We cannot even heat, heat our milk with that flute, you know? I mean, this is such a, this is such a wonderful wonderful setting you know nobody can say this it is the supreme personality of godhead which is revered all throughout the universe and the gopis are making fun you know i mean that is really good humor to say come on this little flute how can we what we have enough do you think we don't have enough wood for making fire this is so much sarcasm this is really highly 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 humorous so imagine this good fortune we are sitting here all over Europe and the world and 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 the demigods they they cannot understand they think we are really we have some something on the we are crazy you know but this is actually Raganuga Bhakti this is what we relish that we can hear such things you know this is so beautiful this is not how can we find this anywhere else you know this is not that we don't take these prayers of the demigods seriously I don't want to say that but this is really something on a really, really different level, 
that that we can hear that the, how the mantras are addressing addressing Krishna. This is actually the superiority of the mantras are, are shining through in every purport of Baba, every verse he is commanding on. You can find it that the, the exalted position of the mantra is, just imagine saying this to your superior. You get in the material world, you get you get really trouble when you say such things, you know, but this is so sweet and Krishna enjoys it. That is another thing. Krishna really enjoys it. Just imagine how funny he will, if we think it's funny, when they say, you know, we don't need this for cooking fire, this little bamboo thing. Imagine how funny it must be for him. So this is such a wonderful, wonderful pastimes. And it goes on further and further because now Krishna will, I think there's another whole pastime where they hide the flute and and and, and who has the flute, it, it goes on and on and on. So this is really wonderful. Successful Ekadashi. My God, are you in a cave, Sachinandan Baya, that you have a successful Kadasi? <laughs> Beautiful, this I, I, I'm inside, I'm so joyful, I cannot explain. I'm listening to Tarun Baba, you, Gaurvani, Gaurachandra, and my heart is bumping, boom, boom, boom. It's like I'm, I'm enjoying inside a lot. I just did um, an hour ago Parikarma and after our Parikarma just I opened this <laughs> Zoom and I'm listening since that time and my heart is like boom, boom, boom. So nice things coming and so nice uh, uh, explanations and uh, uh, sharings are there. It's, it's, it's really touching. It's really touching the heart. And uh, you know, Krishna wants to become loser and he is blissful to become a loser to make Radharani winner. This came in my mind and that I'm thinking on it and listening also you all guys. Uh, it's a superb um, more thing. If uh, Dev is there, if he, he will say more and more, then will be more beneficial for us. Very beautiful. Um, my heart is, uh, heartbeat is very fast <laughs> after listening all this sharing. Thank you very much. Oh. Thank you, Sachinandan Baya. <laughs> and you just said that actually Krishna wants to lose, and he also wants to lose further, not only in the case between him and Radharani, he also wants to lose in the case of the Mandaris. Otherwise, how could he dare to look at the Mandaris for the flute? Exactly. This will give trouble a lot. <laughs> exactly. Gurudev, Gurudev, you should have the last word. Please, Gurudev, say something. Share some nectar. You see the Gopal mantra? Gopi Janavallava. He is a Vallava of Gopis. And Gopis means Radhika. And all his associates. <laughs> this is the explanation of Gopalaman. This is the meditation when we do the Gopalaman. Radhe. This is the beauty of Gopal Mantra. When we chant, we have to see this past time, that moment, and, and chant this Gopal Mantra. So, Radhe Gurudev. And the Mandaris like it best when Shrimati Radhika is throwing herself on him and stealing yeah. the fruit and he will faint, right? <laughs> yeah. Because 
Krishna cannot ask to Mandiris. He can take to the gopis, sakis, but not to Mandiris. Mm. You see, he no yeah, check. Yeah, yeah. He no check to the Mandiris. He checking to the sakis. Gurudev, because he knows how the Manjaris will react, right? No, <laughs> how the Radhika will react if I, 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 I touch to the Manjari, Radhika yes. will like. He's a Radhika's baby. <laughs> <laughs> So, he can search the gopis for the guru. Whole body, he is yes. searching, whole body to find the guru. Whole body. search, but he cannot find. So, how continue then? He cannot touch the manjari. Manjari, he, he know, do this. And no asking him. Then. He see that he is going to the manjari. Radhika go to the manjari, but no. The sloka is when the radical throne flowed to me that I can hide it. Yeah. Meaning the Lila now continues. Yeah. After Krishna research all the books. Mm. What will happen? Lila is going on. You chant and meditate. <laughs> That is Leela going on. That is Gopal. Radhe. Kam Gayatri mantra is also Leela is going on. All is based on Many in past time is based on Kamagaj. What the possible past times are there in Vilaputra Mandir? Never happen and never will happen again. All is there, our good luck. That by the grace of Mahajan, some realizations come into us. And we are sitting and sharing and trying to realize something. Out of this is wasting your time. Right, right.